If someone would have told me in Upper One that I would be standing here today as head prefect speaking in the chapel, I would have looked at them and said, you can't be serious. If you were to say it to my grade seven self, I would have said, you literally cannot be serious. Not because I was ever afraid of public speaking, because trust me, I could hardly stop talking back then. But instead, this was because I never thought I would come to Appleby College, let alone apply to be head prefect. But we'll get into that a little bit later. Today, I want to tell you all a little bit about my life and how I became the person I am today. But before we get into the heavy stuff, I want to talk to you about something you are all probably quite sick of hearing about. You guessed it, COVID-19. I remember last year, I was sitting in my living room during yet another lockdown with my mom watching Grey's Anatomy. I know this isn't everyone's favorite show, but bear with me, I have a point. As we turned on the first episode of season 17, I was upset to see that it was going to be about COVID, much like all news articles and social media posts at the time. I turned to my mom and I said, don't these producers know that we're living this out in real life? Why would I wanna watch the pandemic on TV as well? Although I, and probably many of you, sometimes still feel this way about our current circumstances, I've realized in the past few months that COVID is kind of like the elephant in the room. It's something that we all know is there, but that we're afraid to discuss. However, I think that it is so important that we do talk about it. The pandemic happened, and it is still happening. It has been a discouraging time, and having to deal with a situation that many of us have never seen before hasn't been easy. Understanding that everything in our lives has and will continue to change can be frustrating and hard to accept for all of us, myself included. This year is going to look different than any year we've ever experienced as we start to look up out of what has been the past year and a half. We will most likely face setbacks and other obstacles. But look around you. We're here today. We're on campus and we're in the chapel. We made it out and the circumstances have helped us grow by learning how to adapt and maintain bonds regardless of what stands between us. By continuing to find new ways to connect with one another, despite physical and invisible barriers, we can strengthen our community. Even a simple FaceTime call with a friend or eating lunch with each other outdoors can offer opportunities to uphold relationships and form new ones. But enough about COVID. It has helped me grow into who I am, but it's not the only force. In fact, it's a small one in comparison to that of my family, my friends, and this community right here. In seventh grade, I was living in North Bay, Ontario, doing regular 13-year-old things and enjoying life. That was until my parents sat me down and told me we were going to a place four hours away to look at a school called Appleby College. And I pretty much thought my life was over. Why would my parents make me pack up my entire life, leave my friends, my home, and everything I'd known for the past six years of my life just for some school? Now, this was not the first time I had been through this routine. By routine, I mean the packing, the goodbyes, and the leaving. Growing up, I moved around often as in I have lived in five different cities in my life. I know to some of you this may seem insignificant as I'm sure there are many of you that have moved many more times than that. However, this meant for me five new towns, five new houses, five new schools, and five times of having to be the new kid. Frankly, I was tired of having to leave everything I'd known yet again, and I was tired of being the new kid. The first time I ever saw Appleby College was quite the experience. I remember being in the parking lot with tears in my eyes, feeling completely uncertain and afraid of what was outside of my car door. My dad and my sister Holly had gotten out of the car earlier, already making their way to the admissions office. What my mom said next to me was, you don't have to go, but how will you know you don't like it if you don't try? 
Well, of course, I took that as a challenge and I stepped out onto the campus I didn't know I would be living on with my best friends just five years later. Once I stepped out and was greeted by one of the most cheerful students I'd ever met, my perspective did a 180. Isn't it crazy that the student ambassador who gave me the tour that day changed my life and probably doesn't even remember it? Walking through campus was something I'll never forget. Looking around and seeing the smiling faces of the students that helped convince me, hey, this place can't be so bad. And just like that, after an hour long tour, my perspective of this school changed from the worst place I could possibly be to the best one. After the tour, when I went back into the same car that I was in tears in just an hour before, I practically begged my parents to let me come to Appleby for middle two instead of upper one. I did end up coming in upper one, but that's besides the point. Before attending Appleby, I never knew about my family history here. My granddad, Tim Haynes, attended Appleby College and graduated in 1962. I remember on my first day of Upper One, one of the first things I did was go to the graduating class photos and find his picture there. He attended services in this very chapel and quite possibly stood where I stand today and spoke to his peers. He and my Nana got married in this chapel. Appleby is steeped with the memory of him and I know he would be so proud of me standing here today. As some of you may know, the theme for this school year is all in. The phrase may seem short and sweet, but it represents so much more than just those two words. In life, we all face situations that we are put into with no idea what we're supposed to do. It may be losing a loved one or being unwillingly thrown into a worldwide pandemic. Regardless of what you're faced with in my whole 17 years of life, I have found that without putting your all into everything you do, you can't get it all out of it. Going all in means taking risks in your everyday life. It reminds us to give 100% effort in anything that we do. It tells us to go introduce ourselves to that group of people, to step out of that car door. One of my favorite quotes is, if not me, who? If not now, when? When student leadership applications rolled out at the end of March, I knew that I wanted to apply to be a prefect. However, I wasn't sure if whether or not I wanted to check that little box that said, would you like to be considered for head prefect? Now, I am so glad that I did. I am so glad that I took the advice of that quote. I am so glad that I took that risk and I am so incredibly glad that I decided to put my all into those applications because if I didn't, I wouldn't be able to experience the opportunities I have thus far, including working with a team of 14 incredible individuals. These people are who make up the prefect team and who work behind the scenes to make sure that we all have the best year we possibly can. Even after working with them for just a couple weeks, they have taught me many lessons and widened my perspective. The diverse voices on our team have made us stronger because we all experience the world differently and respect the variation we each bring. Working with them will be an experience I'll never forget. If there's anything I want you all to take away from this talk, it's that change is okay. In order to grow as people, we need to embrace the change around us and understand that the new and the different isn't so bad. It's usually exactly what we need. If I told my parents that I did not want to come to Appleby College back in grade seven, I wouldn't have. If I didn't decide to take a risk and go all in, I never would have become the person that I am today. But wow, am I happy that I did. Coming to Appleby has and continues to help me and all of us grow as people. From learning skills like how to use a J-stroke on the canoe in Tomogamy, to bettering my soft skills with the Student Ambassador Program and making lifelong friendships, I cannot even begin to imagine what my life would look like without the presence of the Appleby community. So, to you all, my peers, my teachers, my counselors, and my family, 
I want you all to embrace discomfort this year. I encourage you to try with everything you have and everything that you do. Because like the wise words my mom gave me all those years ago on this very campus, how will you know you don't like it if you don't try? Middle schoolers, don't be afraid to go out to that co-curricular that you've always wanted to try or to talk to the older kids. They're not as scary as they look, I promise. Upper school students, starting high school is nerve wracking. Trust me, I know. But everyone around you is in the same boat. Reach out to someone new. It might be just what they need in that moment. Senior ones, I want you to go out for that leadership position. There are so many diverse roles that offer unique opportunities to help your Applebee community. And it is so worth trying your absolute hardest to get one. And finally, to my fellow senior twos, it's our last year together. So let's make the most of every second. Don't forget to make the time to check up on your friends and to have fun amidst your busy schedules. Learning to grow isn't always easy, but it is always worth it. And it is essential. Adjusting our sails to accommodate for the winds blowing around us is the only way we can truly grow. As a community, let's embrace the changing winds this year and regardless of what is thrown at us, let's welcome discomfort and support one another through it all. So now, will you please pretend to rise and sing my personal favorite hymn, number 656, She Comes Sailing on the Wind.